I'm Mike Caligiuri. I'm the current president of the American Association for Cancer Research, and I'm also the president of the City of Hope National Medical Center. Delighted to be here. Elaine? Hi, I'm Elaine Martis. I'm the uh, program committee chair for the AACR annual meeting for 2018. And my day job is as co-executive director of the Institute for Genomic Medicine at Nationwide Children's Hospital. The breadth and diversity of what we've put together as a program, the forum at the McCormick Center is going to be fantastic for really, you know, not just the opportunity to experience all of these different areas, but also to meet and interact with um, scientists that you know and the ones that you don't know as well yeah. um, and really to explore out this full spectrum from basic science discovery to you know final implementation and, and other aspects See, of clinical policy trials. Yeah, clinical trials you know I think there's just sort of something for everybody there in the way that we've planned it absolutely even survivorship uh, you know advocates coming to the meeting right. I mean this there's really you know we've this is nuts to bolts we've, we've got it all there and yeah. there's a lot going on in the personalized or precision immunology space oh um, this is going to get focused on in a multitude of different sessions and really try to exemplify how we're um, taking this current know-how in crafting immunotherapies to just like a very much higher level um, where we're seeing fewer side effects because these are more aimed at you know cancer specific um, alterations um, we're seeing also the combinations now of immunotherapies um, and also things that you know about like cell engineering and, and how to turn cell engineering of immune molecules into new therapeutics, etc. Absolutely. Yeah. For me, I like to use the meeting to kind of catch up on things I can't keep up with, like mm -hmm. Elaine's whole field of, you know, cancer genomics, yeah. cancer genetics, and its applications are amazing now. And as well as other areas like gene editing, you know, how's oh, that yeah. going to come into my world of immunology, uh, immunobiology, mm -hmm. survivorship. Uh, yeah. Cancer health disparities, these are all moving just as quickly as the sexiest areas in, in cancer biology. And uh, so it's also an opportunity for us to just, you know, get that one, you know, stop and chop and understand exactly what's going on in different areas by world leaders. Really amazing. Right. And I, I completely agree that part of the breadth of the meeting really gives you the opportunity to even step out of your comfort zone, if you will, and really take on some of these new areas that we, you know, maybe don't think about so much, but all play very importantly into the mix, like access, disparities, um, the whole survivorship aspect is really important because people are now surviving cancer, yes. and so what does that mean for their long-term health care and other aspects that are more psychosocial, yeah. for the example. and the policy. Mm -hmm. Know? Yeah, and then there's the meet the experts. So you really want to oh, drop yeah. in and talk to somebody for an hour who's a world leader in yeah. the area. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I mean, there's the opportunity to do that uh, day after day after day. Yeah. So really exciting. Those those are all going to be great, I think. And I think other thing we haven't talked about here, but like big data, that was mm -hmm. two important buzzwords. Well kind of the innovation and in computational biology, like yeah. really that's gonna to continue to emerge. And just today we were in our meeting and just I kept hearing over and over again, computational biology, informatics, different sessions everywhere. It's becoming a, a mainstay of all the, mm -hmm. all sessions, yeah. you know, because of the amount of data we have and how do you handle it. I think also just in terms of very hot areas it would be liquid biopsy. And and you know how so everybody sort of understands what that is, but how do we optimally really craft that into a clinical exactly. tool, um, playing off of the important basic research that's really led us to the realization that this could be a great way to monitor patients in a more rapid, cost-effective, highly sensitive way, but you know it still has to go through the important vetting of clinical trials, comparisons to other monitoring approaches, etc. And this is not just for targeted therapy, but now emerging areas of immunotherapy-based yes. liquid biopsy. Um, and then really moving that even backwards further in time in terms of the aspects of early detection and even ultimately to cancer prevention, I think are sort of, if you're looking for something that 10 years from now we're going to be sort of taking for granted, right, hopefully that's it because we'll be much better able to detect cancers early and or you know, even prevent cancers. So I think this is, for me, sort of one of the areas that is hot now, but is really gonna grow over the upcoming years um, as, as we see 
you know, better refinement around the technologies that are you're, being you're, used. You're getting the calls now, even I think as of yesterday, about late-breaking early clinical trials. Right. So if you want to hear about the kind of the latest, earliest phase clinical trial that Mm -hmm. To your point, a couple of years from now, yeah. we'll be further along. You're going to hear about it at AACR meeting. Some of the things that are, I think, critically important, especially for the young people that are coming to the meeting, right. are these meet the expert sessions. You know, get to it early. You know, for, vote early, vote often. We are in Chicago, so, right? <laughs> you know, uh, because it, sign up for those soon, because we've got an amazing cast of outstanding scientists, clinicians, statisticians, uh, folks in all different areas and that's an opportunity for young people to meet yep. people like Elaine and just ask anything you know anything from very very basic to application to career advice exactly so um, I'm, I'm especially uh, like those yeah I agree with Mike and then to turn it around we're also offering some new features around the poster sessions that give young investigators who would normally just be standing by their posters actually a chance to give a quick sort of elevator pitch speech in a specific format that in the on the day before their poster happens right and then they can show up at that poster the next day and people who have heard their elevator speech may be encouraged to come by and ask more questions and that gives them a chance to sort of talk about their science meet people Absolutely. you know um network, network yes okay. and so we really kind of i think wanted to do this with a nod towards getting more young investigators up on the podium in front of people to hear about their science. So I think that'll be an interesting corollary to the Meet the Experts because both are important, learning to speak about your science, but also learning from people who have been through, you know, what the Meet the Experts have been through scientifically, personally, professionally, and really, you know, getting that on um, both sides of the coin, if you will. So I'm excited about those areas.